Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being with us today. Scared everybody. Scared our guest here. No, no, no. I'm just always very excited to do anything I can do for the arts, especially the performing arts and specifically theater. And I have a wonderful program to highlight in today's program. And we have the artistic director, John Lawrence Rivera, and also someone who is part of the program for this year and hopefully for years to come. Uh, literary associate Zaria O'Neill. So thank you both for being on our program. First of all, let's get a little bit of background because, you know, I live in Los Angeles, but honestly, I have never heard of Playwriters Arena. Can someone tell me what it is and give me some historical background on this? Yes, uh, Playwrights Arena um, started in 1992, uh, right, right in the middle of the um, LA riots. Um, at the time, we, during the riots, um, we were thinking that the best way to get some kind of harmony in the community is to really support the, the, the people of, of Los Angeles. And so we created a theater company that is dedicated specifically to LA artists and, uh, and most especially to LA playwrights. And so since 1992, for the last 28 years, we've been producing new works uh, written exclusively by Los Angeles playwrights. And all of our artists, actors, designers, directors, all of the people involved are all local artists. Um, and most of them are uh, people of color. So we are very um, much in support of of promoting a lot of um, a lot of diversity in our community, so that our productions really reflect our community as a whole. You know, during the show, I'll be asking you how can our viewers and listeners be involved? You know, support at, at many levels, at the talented side, as well as supporting the and and seeing your plays when they're finally out. Hopefully, we all get together again and enjoy that. If I can quickly ask you a very difficult question. How do you see theater helping repair, for example, Los Angeles at LA riots and up to now? And I mean, this is a century old question, but you know, it's just interesting to know, like you said, you were impacted by the LA riots and you said, we're gonna reverse this. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think the, the thing that's very important in, um, in our culture is that we give space, we give a platform to people who are not heard or seen uh, a lot. And so I think that us specifically for Playwrights Arena, we are very interested in giving uh, voices that would otherwise not be heard a platform, uh, a space, a, a safe space for them to, to tell their stories. Because I feel, I feel like oftentimes they're sort of like relegated to the side to just a little bit of a you know, they do a little reading here, a little workshop, but they don't really get the chance to be promoted into a production. And we literally have to, we do them at that level all the time because we need to make sure that they are being heard and they're being seen by the people of Los Angeles. And I feel like we always, we always hear from our audiences that um, they come and see our productions and they see themselves in those productions because we are a multicultural uh, theater company. So, you know, they might go to other theaters and they have no real connection to the stories or, or to the faces that are on stage because they don't even reflect back to who they are. So um, I feel like our, our theater has really given that, you know, positive outlook into, into the community as far as being able to be represented authentically um, in this, you know, in, in Los Angeles. Also, you made me think also that it's easy to forget something passes, LA riots. We may forget them, but you keep the, the story in front of us and you keep telling us why it happened. And then theater reminds us, it's just not in one place. It's not just one group of people, it's universal. That's right. Absolutely. Now, uh, you also shared with me, we have Zaria O'Neill, and she is from the British Virgin Islands. I love the yes. Virgin Islands. I love the Caribbean. I love it. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love going there. Tell us how you got involved with this outstanding program. 
Yeah, so um, I'm actually an MFA second year candidate at USC in their dramatic writing program. And the head of our program is Valina Hasu Houston. And she's an associate artist with Playwrights Arena. And she reached out to us this summer and she let us know that Playwrights Arena was looking for assistance with this amazing summer series reading, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And I was like, I would love to help and be of assistance with that. And from there, I've just started in May and it's been a whirlwind and now I've gotten involved <laughs> with the literary department. It's just been great. So yeah, I found it kind of by chance, but I'm really glad. If I can sort of sidetrack you a little bit, mm -hmm. when did you personally get involved in the world of theater? Oh man, uh, in, in the sense of academically, I was originally an early childhood education minor and one of my classes got canceled the summer before and I signed up for a playwriting class and it was with Oliver Mayer and that is when I got hooked and he's actually going to be one of the playwrights in our summer series so this is like full circle <laughs> but I got hooked and from there it's been kind of realizing that this community of theater, especially in Los Angeles, the Los Angeles theater scene has been so welcoming and has had so many special like people and pieces of work that I've been able to witness that I just, ha I haven't been able to get away. So it kind of sucked me in. <laughs> the storytelling is overwhelmingly addicting yeah. uh, from what it I'm is, picking up from you. It's good. It's that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, share with me as you shared the reading series. Yeah. Is this an annual thing? How many do they do? And, you know, what happens before and after the, the readings? Yeah, so this year what we've got is a, a Zoom-based reading series. So it's a 10-week series of curated selections of bold new works by Los Angeles playwrights. And it's primarily for board consideration, but playwrights have invited friends and family and we've had several people just come and join in. And these readings take place each Sunday. And a few of them have post-show discussions afterwards. Some of them do not have post-show discussions, but it's usually about two hours. It's a great experience online. Um, and then we work through each play until we get to number 10. So right now we're about to have number seven actually on Sunday. It's gonna be really exciting. Um, and these playwrights have all been great to work with. And well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch a little bit here. Uh, Daniel Olivas, yeah. uh, Daniel Olivas, and I we've been networking, and he told me, you know, I'm doing it. And I asked Dan, I said, "What are you talking about?" And yeah. Then he shared with me, so I thought, "Oh my gosh, I gotta do we this!" Are so I, excited. So I, I share my ignorance, but I also am willing to learn. Wow. Uh, John said he inspired him to do the the playwright uh, playwriters arena from the riots. Of all the subjects that you see at your age, being you're just a tad younger than us, mm -hmm. what inspires you? What, what is strikes you most about all the different plays, the themes that really impact you? I think what I've been noticing is a theme with all of the plays that we've seen so far has been an interrogation of dominant narratives. And I think that with, with my generation and also what's been going on lately, a lot of us have been questioning what normal is. And there's been this push to this return to normal. And I think a lot of people are asking like, is that normal something worth going back to? Or do we want to evolve? And each play that I've seen from Belina Hasu Houston's Out of Frame, which was kind of interrogating Hokusai through the lens of a biracial aspiring museum curator to Jason and Medea by Nick Salamone, that is really interrogating the Medea myth and showing the other side, I have been able to see people of all generations, all colors and all creeds that are all questioning the narratives that we've been fed. So I think that's been the most inspiring part of this series and what I've just been witnessing out of theater in general recently. You think this theme, as important as it is, you think it'll evolve into television and film? I think, I think that it might, but I think theater has something special in the fact that it is live and it is a group of people, whether or not it's over Zoom, it's a group of people all gathered in the same metaphysical space, all witnessing the same event at the same time. And I think the power of that 
is so potent, is so potent that I think that theater is really going to be what drives that what's next, what really pushes us into what we craft as our new normal together. So I think that yes, television and film will of course adapt this interrogation, but I think theater has a little something special in order to actually accomplish it. Being that the audience is a little bit smaller, it, it has more freedom, has more expression to do because you can play it and change it very quickly. Mm -hmm. Changing scripts is a headache, but changing the play and adapting it to the audience, I think it's a fabulous and extremely creative uh, area. I'm gonna throw pitch something a little sidebar here also for myself. I'm a person who propose, I keep proponing and I keep sharing that I think the future will have less and less jobs because of AI and robots. But I see the creative world, i.e. theater and others growing because it, we need to have our consciousness. And that's one of the reasons I really support uh, Playwriters Arena as well. Uh, let me ask John. John, can you give us uh, information about where you see uh, Playwriters Arena today and into the near future? Well, um, I mean, I think Playwrights Arena since we've opened the door um, with casting and with promoting uh, people of color for 28 years, I think people are catching up on that idea. And I think that especially with the um, Black Lives Matter uh, movement that's going on right now, okay. I feel like we've, we've opened that door, you know, in our spaces for, for, for that kind of performances. But I think a lot of theaters are going to start opening up their doors into that kind of, of uh, you know, uh, of stories. And I think there is no way to avoid that kind of storytelling at this point, because I think we're being awakened by what has been going on, um, you know, for a long time with, you know, with people of color, with, with black people, with indigenous people. So I think that is, that is where the future is going to be. And I'm hopeful that that's where we're going to go. Uh, you know, I mean, only time will tell, but I think even in my conversations with the um, artistic directors of, of Los Angeles, we meet every Tuesday morning and have a powwow. And I think we've been talking about a lot of these future ideas that we need to really um, be more open and more uh, available to BIPOC, uh, you know, artists. Can can we break into your group just a t just a tad and hear maybe one of those ideas that you see in the future? Yeah, I mean, I think so. Right now, you know, one of the things that we've been um, talking about is trying to market Los Angeles theater, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think for the longest time, uh, people just don't know that we're a theater town. I mean, they mm -hmm. they come to Los Angeles, they go to Disneyland, to Venice Beach, to Universal. And then they go back to wherever. And the idea of, of coming to LA and going to Disneyland, going to Venice Beach, going to Universal, <laughs> and then seeing a play is just not something that they're interested in doing. So we are talking about how to brand Los Angeles as a destination for theater audiences. And it is not a small, it is not going to be a small effort because you do that in a small scale and no one will understand. So we're actually getting together to make sure that we get a, a marketing um, consultant, uh, a, a company who can actually make this promotion so that, and, and trying to get the city and, and the county to come and support it so that literally when people come to, come to uh, LAX, they should already be seeing all of the signs of the, of the shows that are playing in LA as a theater town, because I think when you come to LAX, you see the pictures of Disneyland and you see the pictures of Venice Beach, but there is no picture of theater. There is no awareness of it. So it's a big, it's a big effort that we're trying to do just because we are in this big moment of pause. So we're, we're all sort of like stopped. So when we, re, when we restart, we want to be able to restart with a whole new stream of, of ideas and, and, and promoting the, 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 the theaters. So that's okay. one of the things, I mean, we, this is now our, I would say our uh, 10th week of having um, meetings. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we've already been, that we have done in trying to just 
help ourselves through, through this crisis because everybody's in trouble and trying to figure out, you know, resources and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But we are looking into, um, we are looking into something in the future so that when we do come back, we're not just going back into the norm, that we are going to something that is new and in our programming and in the way that we are represented, you know, uh, outside of the community. I have one small question before we give out the contact information so that our viewers and listeners can find you and figure different ways of supporting it. And my question is on sheer number, just mathematical number, who has more theater, New York or we do? I think statistically we have. Mm -hmm. That's Los what I've heard. That's yeah. what I've heard. Yeah. I've heard that over and over again, and I thought, never knew that. Well, um, LA Stage Alliance, which is our uh, main uh, support uh, group here, um, they have, on, on their record, they have over 100 theater companies. Wow. In LA. So I didn't know that. That is, and, that, and these are like 105 companies that are ongoing. They're not just like, we did one show and then they don't do anything for like five years. And they, these are 100, over 100 theater companies that are constantly doing at least one or two shows or more per year. So there's a lot. I, I, I think of Casa 101, I think of uh, uh, Red Hat, Red, Red, right. Red Cap. Red Cap. And, and then how many colleges and universities have smaller theaters also? That's right. And we're not even counting those theaters. Wow. I mean, these are just like, yeah. So I think that we have uh, the most theaters of all of the metropolitan cities. But, you know, I, again, with all of that, people should know that one of their options when they come to L.A. is to see a play, you know, and that's just not, they go to New York. When you get to New York and you <laughs> land at JFK, they're already telling you which shows because they're all like one one after another. There's a panel of all of the shows that do, that's in town. So I think we should we can do better and do that. Awesome. Contact information, please. Mm -hmm. so, so the best way to reach us would be through our website, uh, which is playwrightsarena.org. But for the reading series, Zaria will give you the information how to, to get involved. Yes, so if you're interested in hearing more about our summer series, you can contact us at pa.summerseries at gmail.com and you will get more information about this amazing series that we have only four weeks left of. How can people keep in contact and, you know, sort of get more information all year round? Yeah, so the website has, you know, we, we, we keep it updated. I mean, obviously, there's nothing right now that, that, that <laughs> you know, we, we don't really know what's going on. But on our website, there is a, you know, a button that says, I need more information. And they automatically get to, to our email blast. How can our viewers, listeners financially support your organization so that it continues to grow and bring us the consciousness that we need? Well, I think it's very important just to, for, our, for people who are unfamiliar with Playwrights Arena to just go to the website and just, because we have our whole history there, it has our, all the shows that we've, been, we've done in the last 28 years. It will give you a taste and all the reviews that we've had. So it will give you a real sense of what the company is about. And there is a support button in there. So if you want to support us financially, there is a way to do that. There's also, like I said, there is a button to just say, I would like to, to help as a volunteer. We need volunteers. We need board members. Whoever is out there listening to this and has the time, we need board members who has the time to really support an organization that is in the forefront of doing diverse uh, plays and, and presenting diverse work. So I think, I hope that somebody out there is listening and say, oh my God, I retired and I'm a, an accountant and I can help as a board member. That's what we need. We need some wow. support. Um, now, now I'm going to push it from that side too, because I think it's <laughs> really, really an exciting opportunity for many individuals as well. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, but I'd like to give each one of you a time to sort of, uh, I'm not going to use awakeness. 
I think the theater's always been awake. I think the people are not awake, but you guys keep us reminding us. We sort of don't want to see the stories you bring to us, but I think we have to. We don't have a choice. We have to live and, and see the best and the worst of ourselves and work towards finding a better world. So let me open it up. Um, Zarai, you want to go first? Uh, your closing statements? Yeah, yeah I would say that um, one of the most valuable things about theater is that stories do get passed on and on. So the best way that you can support those stories being passed on and on is to come and witness those stories being told. And I think that's what's been really great about the summer series is that we've had every single Sunday, there's a story being told and they vary in theme and all of the people that you see are from various colors and creeds. So yeah, come witness theater. You struck, you struck an issue with me. How about people who are considering being writers and want to learn Absolutely. how to the process? How can they get in touch with you and the organization and continue to evolve how they can get to work someday into the public scenery? Absolutely. They absolutely can. And you can email our literary department at playwrightsarena.lanewplays at gmail.com. And I think also as a writer, I'm a writer myself. You should come see what the conversation is and come see some of these works as well. Absolutely. There's more opportunities than just the readings, but that's the core of it. Mm -hmm. But there's activity all year round. And now with Zoom, the idea that you're in Arizona or you're in Nevada makes no excuse anymore. Everybody's involved. Ta -da! <laughs> Come on down. Come on down. <laughs> so I, I, I wish you continual success once you graduate from USC and into the world of theater and wherever you go. I can see a lot of success in you and you're going to promote theater the rest of your life. I can sense that. I will. I, can't, I won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Rivera, how about yourself? Well, my own... My, my last thought that I could impart is that there are a lot of theaters in Los Angeles that do diverse work. Um, not enough, but there's, there's, there's some that are already out there. And I feel like audiences um, can find those work, but they have to do a little bit of, of legwork. They can't just go to any theaters and just cross their fingers that they're going to see that kind of work, that kind of diverse programming. But if you cannot come to Playwrights Arena, there are other theaters that are near you that might be doing the same thing. So I would just say that people need to just do some research and, and uh, do some homework and support local theater. Really go and support them because without, without audiences, we're, you know, we're just telling stories to ourselves and we can do that all day long, but <laughs> if, we're not, if, we're not, if we're not sharing those stories with, with uh, strangers, then we're not, doing, we're not doing service to the, to the work of the playwright, to the work of the actors, to the work of the designers and the directors. So we're doing this so that we can give you a little bit of entertainment, we can give you a little bit of thought, we can give you a little bit of resilience and a little bit of, of uh, power to take on and, and be uh, assured that we as people of color have a place in this, in this world. And I think mm -hmm. that's the most important part of, of what we can do as, as theater artists and audiences can, can come and support that, whether it's Paris Arena or other theaters, but be present, be there so that we can keep telling the stories. In back of my mind, taking everything you've said to me, in back of my mind is the future, the, our future, the future actors, future writers, future performers, producers, our future. And I get the sense that your organization supports the present and future generations. And your mission is very clear sure. and I really support that as well. Before we close, can we please give out the contact information one more time? Yes, yes absolutely. So, yeah. So for, for the uh, general information about Playwrights Arena, our website is playwrightsarena.org. And for the reading series. For the reading sorry. series, you can email pa.summerseries at gmail.com. Fantastic. Thank you very much for being on the show. I hope it's not yeah. the last time. And I'm going to get involved with you guys. I got to get involved. <laughs>
Thank you, Armando. Thank you so much. Oh, you're more than welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being on our program. Please feel free. You know, I'm going to sneak in that address one more time since I have you right here, Zara. Please sneak in that address one more time for me. PA.summerseries at gmail.com. Beautiful. This is 2020 and it's every year. Get involved at many tiers, many levels, support theater in this organization or anywhere in the world that you're interested in, but please support theater. You will never regret being part of it. And especially if you can take a second and just stand there and even hold up a torch or something in the middle of a scene, you will get just what a great experience it is for everyone and children. Please support children theater as well. Thank you very much. I'm Armando F. Sanchez. You can find me at afsanchez66 at gmail.com, or you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, blah, 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 the whole series. Thank you, and continuous success to Playwriters Arena. Adios. Okay, we're good. Thank we're good, you. guys. Yeah, Great, okay. thank you. Uh, Armando, just to make sure, uh, it's Playwrights Arena. It's not Playwriters. Playwrights Arena. I'll make the yeah. correction. I'll yeah. keep popping just up the make, names and uh, I'll, yeah. I'll make the correction. Make sure. I'm glad you told me. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. Any way okay. I can help, never hesitate to let me know. And if I can, I'll do whatever I can. All right. Thank you, Armando. Thank Goodbye. you. Adios. Bye.